Cheers, everyone, and welcome to The Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg, Scott, and Dan. Oh, thank you. I feel so classy. Welcome in, everybody. It's The Unfiltered Gentleman. Oh, yeah. I am Greg. That is Scott. Good grief. And on trombone, <laughs> that is Dan. What up? <laughs> Charlie Brown over there. Sound like Charlie Brown music. I love Charlie Brown. <laughs> Yeah, this is all snappy and classy. Yeah, it so. sounds like a like a real classy like office party or like something. Schroeder like Schroeder playing the piano. Who? Schroeder. Oh, Sh- I think said Shredder. Schroeder, Shredder, Shredder, whatever his name is. Oh, I think his name turtles. is. Oh, Shredder's not the turtle. So yeah. yeah, I think it is Schroeder. Schro- like Schroeder. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Schroeder's the guy on the piano. Shredder's the guy that. Eat turtles. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, turtles. Now that that's straightened out. Thanks yeah. everyone for listening. Hey, we watch <laughs> cartoons. Okay. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to. And this one's got me perplexed. Bridgetown Barbados. What? what? Yeah, no joke. I was looking at the stats. That was on the stats. Stats Bar- don't lie. Stats don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So uh, thank you, Bridgetown Barbados. People in Barbados don't lie. No, no, no. And they apparently they like uh, good pod and good beer. Well, there you go. Yes. <laughs> so thanks for listening hmm. down there in Barbados. Yeah, we should head down there sometime. Maybe we should. Yeah. We, have, we have quite the following. We Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> I've had people ask me like, hey... Was, you just make up the towns, right? I was like, no, I, I literally go to our stats and I, I do a week of stats at a time and find out who the top city was and Barbados, Bridgetown, hey, you Barbados. You can't make huh? this shit up. No, that would not be a town I made up. No. I'd be like, oh, yeah, look at Ibiza. You know, that yeah, was the top. It would be like, oh, yeah, the f- popular town, Chicago. Yeah, 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 Walla whatever, Walla, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> popular town, Chicago. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> is Popular Town in Chicago? Is that what you're ensuing? Uh, something like that. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, thank you, Bridgetown Barbados, for listening. This is the first thing that popped in my head. Right, yeah. Uh, the state of Chicago, the town of Popular Town. Yeah. I'm yeah. Kind of <laughs> drunk, so. Yeah. Well, par for the course. Yeah, here we go. Uh, burp Word of the Week. It's Christmas. Christmas just right around the corner, everybody. Oh, cool. Oh, God, yes. it is. So, good uh, Lord. Good Lord. Am I supposed to buy people things? I hope not. I, I have not started. Giving everyone a nice, hearty handshake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a ho, ho, ho. That's right. I just uh, want to go to sleep and wake up in January. Right. Yeah. yeah just, I love the whole thing. Like, what do I buy you for Christmas? I don't know what to buy you. You're hard to shop for. Have you seen my favorite hobby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's really easy. Really? Is it really that hard? <laughs> yeah. How hard can it be? <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, anyways, uh, yes, Christmas is the burp board. Shout out to Bridgetown Barbados. Hashtag show us your beers when you're posting your beer pics on the social medias. Don't forget to also hashtag cans for cans if you have some great can oh, art. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, Dan yeah, loves cans. That. Loves yeah. those nice cans. And uh, rate and subscribe on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and any other podcast app you're using please give us a nice little rating and review on there all right we gotta get we gotta got it we got a lot to get to <laughs> i'm already starting it. yeah i'm sober and it's begun already so let's start things off with the beer of the week oh, grab yeah. your libations pals it's time for beer of the week and if you're drinking well you know that you're my friend and i'll say i think i'll have myself a beer Yes, indeed. So we are drinking an Alesmith beer in collaboration with Stone Brewing. It's called Gregarious Nature IPA. Oh, yeah. 7%, 55 IBUs, a 3.91 on Beer Advocate, and a 3.87 on Untapped. Uh, from Alesmith, they say... For this beer, we teamed up with our friends at Stone Brewing Company. The name Gregarious Nature is a nod to the friendship between Alesmith owner Peter Zien and co-owner, excuse me, Stone co-owner Greg Koch. We decided to join forces in salute to the classic San Diego style IPA, which helped put both of our breweries on the map. This easy drinking brew will put you in a friendly mood with its assertive notes of citrus, pine, and grapefruit. You can't argue with the timeless hop character in this clean, flavorful IPA. Get gregarious and share one with a worthy pal today. Hmm. A worthy pal. I guess you all are worthy pals. Wow. We are worthy. Or pals nonetheless. I'm honored. You're honored? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So uh, what say you fellows about uh, gregarious nature IPA? Oh, my gosh. Oh, 
You could definitely taste like the uh, the Ale Smith. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, the, the part of their brewery or whatever, yeah. whatever hand they had in it, <laughs> it's, it's it's tasteable. Like it's definitely some Ale Smith on there, and it's just it's a perfect marriage right here, man. I'm yeah. digging it. It is tasty. It really makes me think like San Diego West Coast. Yeah, like, yeah. If, if you want that hot bomb, that piney resinous goodness, like this brings you back to the good old days of like early 2000s when San Diego was blowing up your taste buds with some hops and IBUs. Yeah. I'm actually surprised this is only 55 IBUs. Wow. Tastes like more to me. Really? Holy shit. A lot of pine on the nose. Yeah. Very, uh, like I said, I think that Ale Smith has that like kind of malty uh, mouthfeel to it a little bit. So yeah, it starts off hoppy, kind of rounds out a little malty. Yeah, kind of reminds you of the Ale Smith IPA that yes. won the IPA tournament. Oh my God, dominated! <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. right, the tournament to end all tournaments. That was it, man. We'll have to do a new tournament this coming year. Definitely Correct. March Madness, new style, yeah. new style, new Ooh. bracket. All right, yeah, we have oh, the IPA style. bracket. <laughs> <laughs> One we'll come up with next, but. Uh, yeah, I dig this. I feel like Dan, this is right up your alley. Tis, 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 tis the the beard of the. Se- I don't know. Tis the season. Tis the season for an IPA. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're all in agreement on this one. Definitely delicious. Good. All right, we got a lot to get to. Some crotch talk. Uh, Dan's got a movie to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. A, a very important bullpen beer. We're gonna officially bring in Christmas with one of my favorite traditions. Uh, a couple of Christmas drinking games, and of course, booze news. To round it all out, and a uh, ten beers to to survive the holidays. So let's start off with some crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Uh, a couple grievances. One, what the hell is with Christmas party food these days? Mm-hmm. Like everyone's going to Christmas parties for various uh, job like functions, and since everyone's got an allergy to everything, or everyone's a <laughs> goddamn vegan like they have to order the most bland and it's just oh, yeah. what the hell? i had i had to appease everyone like okay look i know i eat, i eat like a weirdo i don't really eat carbs i only drink them uh i don't eat carbs but when i go to a party like that like i know that I'm either i'm gonna cheat because it's a party where everyone has to be fed or i'll eat beforehand yeah i'm not looking to cheat that night and i fully expect that and i don't expect them to cater to me and if i find something that i can eat great if not i will either make my own arrangements or i will suffer through it this whole thing where like everyone's everyone's gluten-free or everyone's a vegan or a bitch it's like fuck off yeah it's a bunch of crap yeah you're making this so difficult the food at it's just like a bunch of vegetables now at a fucking christmas party oh my god you know what if you're vegan or vegetarian or whatever (laughs) jump off a cliff yeah just don't eat the shit that you don't want to eat just eat the other stuff Mm -hmm. i don't know i i I know my uh my work they had uh my office they had a party at uh made west actually oh yeah, christmas God. Party. i need a new job but i just didn't attend because everyone sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's i do because I, I go to midwest on my own time i suppose you guys don't like major pain jokes i'm done with you guys <laughs> but was there free beer uh i think there was one free beer oh uh, all right yeah. i mean if you could go and just get faded the whole night then yeah i'd have to ask you some questions but <laughs> that's if it's only one you were you only missed out on seven dollars exactly okay fair enough mm-hmm that's, that, that's kind of what I do because, I mean, with all my jobs and when they have Christmas parties every year, uh-huh. and the wife always says, well, are we going to go to the Christmas party? I go, no, I'm not going to go to that Christmas party. Why? Because I hate those fucking people I work <laughs> with every day. I only hang out with them because I'm paid to. I have exactly. to. I don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, and then they their stupid food things and yeah, uh, yeah. We usually kind of just uh, we'll say, hey, we're getting you know a pizza or whatever, and then it says for sure. anybody that's you know does can't eat that, we'll do like a cheese pizza or whatever. Or we'll do like a something on the side for you, right? But nothing where it's like everybody's forced to eat vegan today or whatever, because that's bullshit. Yeah, I was talking. I won't mention which client. We we go to some of our clients' Christmas parties. Mm. And uh, one of the party planners was mentioning, like, oh, my God, I had such trouble this year because so-and-so is vegan and so-and-so is gluten-free and oh so-and-so God. is this. She's like, I, I had so much trouble ordering food, and that's why there's kind of a lot of food because I ought to order something that would, you know, get everybody satisfied. I almost wanted, like, well, I don't eat carbs, so <laughs> yeah. I wish you would have <laughs> so called me. Too. Yeah, exactly. Just to be a dick. You're not like, going to get everybody. No, you can't. Stop exactly. trying. You Stop probably trying. just warn people what you're going to have there. Yeah, ahead then, of time, here's the menu. Yeah. If you can't eat here, show up full. Exactly. And just pre- It's not that hard. Yeah, We're adults here. Drink. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, uh, so... so one of the companies I work for, which is a worldwide corporation right. worth billions of dollars on Uber. the stock market. Oh, shit. How did you know? <laughs> I 
Actually, I'm not going to mention the company, right. but it starts with 3M. <laughs> um, and ends with 3M. <laughs> and ends with 3M. But um, here's here's their their holiday party for their employees is they hand you a ticket because they don't want you to eat too much. So they, here's your ticket. Turn your ticket in. And then you go through the thing, and the managers are there serving the food. Not You don't sit down at the table. You go through a line. Uh, do you want turkey? Yes. Okay, here. They pop it. Oh, I hate I, that. It's like you're in prison. Yeah. Actually, I told my wife this. I said, they, they, they plop the food on your table like you're in prison. Here's your potatoes. Here's your dressing. And do you do it at work? Yes. Oh, God. And That's you the actually, they're, they're just so generous. They give you, okay, we'll give you 15 extra minutes for lunch today. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's, really? That's their big holiday party. Do you get your plate, sit down, and some large man across the table says, you going to eat that cornbread? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. want that fruit cocktail. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even talk about the shower afterwards. Oh, it's, just, yeah. Yeah, it's just very painful. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, it's that's terrible. Your, I wasn't going to talk about this. I totally forgot. Hmm? And uh, memories are being jarred. <laughs> I used to work at a news TV news station whose name will go unannounced KSCI. <laughs> and they were such cheap asses. So they would do basically that, where it was like, oh, Christmas party in the conference room on everyone's break. Lame. <laughs> so we go up there, and like they would, and it was so funny. They wouldn't hire people. They would be like the HR lady and like the administrative assistant and a couple yeah. other people yes. who'd be sitting there like scooping shit yeah. onto your plate. And God forbid, God forbid you ask for anything extra. Yeah. And one year, <laughs> they're so fucking cheap. Fuck those people. I'm so glad I'm gone. I'm so glad they went out of business. I went up there and like I got a uh, they had Mexican food and I got like an enchilada and then I w- went down the line and got like all the sides and shit and my buddy Jared who was working there at the time <laughs> comes over to the table he has half an enchilada <laughs> and I was like well, what happened He's, are you not hungry he's like no Patty cut me off and said I can only have half an enchilada <laughs> oh my god I was like were you is this your second he's like no it's my first oh like, come on wow he's like I didn't bring lunch because they said they were catering lunch and now all I get is like half an enchilada oh, wow. because they were too cheap to order enough and I was like dude that's fucked up that's that's so it was familiar. the ultimate yeah, yeah it was the ultimate in like being cheap yeah and here's what they do they let everybody go in the line and get their food yeah and then after everybody got their food they came back and then announced oh we still have food left if anybody wants seconds oh okay thanks yeah like fuck you okay i'd get seconds but i'm out of break time fucker <laughs> yeah, i gotta go back to work now yeah, sorry no kidding I gotta go back to and see. here's their their big holiday party that is off the you know not at the plant off or, premises off premises uh-huh 30 dollars person oh what you gotta pay hell? yes oh geez i don't think so that's yeah. insane I remember when I used to work at a fast food place that wasn't, it won't be mentioned, McDonald's. <laughs> uh, they did an all right party for like the local stores. The only problem was like you had to take turns going to the party because you can't close all the stores yeah. one night. Oh, right. God forbid you did two different parties, you cheap fucks. That wasn't going to happen. No. So, uh, yeah, we'd have to like fight over who wanted to go to the Christmas party. And here's the thing. If they wanted to pay me like overtime to work the night of the Christmas party, like a little incentive or a little bonus or something. Right. Like, Hell yeah. I don't want to go to your stupid Christmas party. But they never did. They never offered anything. I was like, fuck, I'm going to the Christmas party. That. <laughs> yeah. So cheap. Yeah. That's and, what, what, and then one of my other jobs, which I won't mention, but it's the opposite of Lowe's, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> their, their, their parties are actually free for you, you and one guest. But every year... The people get drunk and then start fighting. Oh God! So, oh really? <laughs> yeah, that's like so I was like, awesome yeah, party. That's, that's, yeah, I want to go there. Yeah, get your so, popcorn. Yeah, out. I never showed up. Oh, yeah. you should go to that one. Oh, that's oh. a good one. You have some good stories for us. Oh man. Well, the, the only other good story was one of the ladies who wore a really short skirt and they started dancing and she did like a really low squat and wasn't wearing oh, underwear. Whoops! Ooh. Welcome to not lows, everyone. <laughs> Jeez, is it uh, apartment station? Uh, close. I yeah. gotta be your plus yeah. one next time. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see this. Yeah. Hey, uh, I think I could pass for Scott to get in. Oh yeah, yeah. go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, we should we should do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Dan, we could we could everybody show up. Show up. Just, just show up. <laughs> after you want to fight, and you'll, they'll let you in the oh, fight. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that'd be great. And so just like, wear not I mean, orange. I know. Last year, the cops were called out and everything. Where did they do it? Um, not at the actual store, I would imagine. No, not the store. It's like at a like a. Yes, that would be a shit show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's going for the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> he just put a drill in his heart. <laughs> um, it's like the you know Hilton or, or uh, wherever, just, just yeah. local ballroom, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. fair enough. That's pretty gangster. That's, yeah, that's and that company good. pays for it. But they, they don't pay for the alcohol. Uh, but people buy their own alcohol and yeah, apparently they do fight each other. Yeah, so sounds like they cool. bring it in too. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. Yes. Yeah. yeah they always sneak in. 
beverages. Luckily for all of them, PBR's back in business. <laughs> Talked about it last week. Oh, geez. Wow, yeah, that's uh, fucking Christmas parties. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just the season. Yeah, I won't bitch about this too long now, but um, planning a wedding. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> We haven't we haven't decided on a date. We haven't decided on a location. We haven't decided on anything. We're just doing like the early stages of like figuring out where we. Want. I think step one for us is where is going to be the location. That's good that you're at least figuring it out. Yeah, because I I think the date really doesn't matter. There's no date where it's like we must get married on this date. We don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> more importantly, is the location. And so like we've reached out to some wineries and a couple breweries. And like all the wineries come back with like yeah it's a ten thousand dollar whoa like just to get the place exactly and then you find out on top of that you can only drink their wine and you know if you go to a oh. winery it's like forty bucks a bottle yep so you can only drink their wine and times how many tables of mm-hmm. you know so we're gonna have to cut Scott off real early oh yeah <laughs> uh, I'm, bi- I'm working that night yeah please <laughs> and some of them um, don't let you bring in beer. Because my thought is like we'll bring we'll we'll buy like a bottle of wine per table, but like the real money saver will be we'll bring in a couple kegs of beer. Um, you know, maybe I can get a little deal worked out with like Brittany over at Integrant or something, you know, or yeah. or just brew my own or something like that. And then uh, you know the the pansies who drink wine can drink wine. <laughs> pansies, yeah. But uh, even with the that, it's still gonna be super. So we reached out to a couple of breweries. Breweries are so much cooler. Yeah, They're just like, course. whatever it would cost us to be open, that's how much it costs. Really? Yeah. So, like, I, I've reached out. I've talked to a couple. One, actually, a friend told us, like, hey, if you want to use the brewery, uh, we'd just charge you whatever it would be to be open that day. Whatever day of the week. You know, like, Saturdays are more expensive than Sundays, let's say, that kind of stuff. Reached out to another one down in San Diego. Uh, I won't mention the breweries just because, you know, I haven't made a decision or anything. But they were like, yeah, uh, if you want to do it on a Sunday, we're looking at, like, Sixteen hundred dollars for five hours and wow, oh, damn. and then wow. plus beer. You know, beer's not included in that price, but just to have the place because they'd have to close down early and all well, that. Stuff. You're already ahead of the game with that. Yeah, so like, yeah. I was like, "Fuck, that's awesome!" So uh, my vote is for a brewery wedding. <laughs> 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 we'll see how this turns out. So, uh, but that's such a pain in the ass. No kidding. And then a piece of good news: uh, I got to go to Air Lodge Brewing over the weekend. Mm-hmm. way out in the middle of nowhere we talked about this man coming up on probably a year ago i was at an arrow lodge and uh they're out in like e- way east uh like pomona oh, as you man. pass pomona it's like claremont area middle of places you don't want to be but the brewery is so good and so when i found out i was gonna have to be in that area i was like fuck we're going to arrow lodge and we did and i just ran the gamut. i was like i want because they had i think they had 10 beers on tap but two of them they weren't doing flights of because they were can only I was like, all right, well, I want two flights. So we got one of everything that we could get. <laughs> God, their beer is so good. They had this uh, Berliner Weiss, which you guys would not enjoy. It's sour. Yeah. But it, it tasted like pog juice, like from Hawaii, like the fruity juice. So good. <laughs> a couple of really good double IPAs. They had this Imperial Stout, which is a little sweet for my liking, but boy, did it hide that double-digit booze. Oh, God, it was so good. I had to had to mention that I stopped there. The lady friend was doing her... Uh, her opera singing out there. So oh, I was like, okay. well, if you're going to drag me out here, I'm going to drag you to yeah, a brewery. That's right. So uh, that was, that was a good times. Anybody else have any grievances to share? No. Good. Everyone's happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think I've done mine. We got it all out with the Christmas party. Yeah, I think that was it, man. <laughs> Fucking Christmas. <laughs> that was a good topic. That man. was good. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> did well, I that, talk about the 50th birthday party I went to? I don't know. Did you? Uh, I don't know. I, I, it was probably about a month ago. So I'll just, say, I'll just do it quickly. It, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> was there alcohol? No. Oh, well, oh, no. Here's the alcohol. Oh. Everybody got because they reminded me when you're talking about the bottle of wine. Everybody got a, everybody got a, like one bottle of wine per table. Ah. Oh. So we did like 15 minutes. We ate. We drank a little bit of wine. And let's get out of here. You know the lady friend Lame. is a. She used to work at a catering company in college, and she was talking about like dry weddings versus booze at weddings she said the quickest wedding she's ever catered were the dry ones oh. because people would go for the reception they'd literally eat dinner and leave like the bride yeah. and groom haven't cut the cake yet they haven't done like <laughs> any of the traditional <laughs> shit but everyone's like fuck it there's no booze we are leaving yeah and they would they just bounce and yep. she's like it was great for us because we were on like a six hour minimum and we'd be done in like three and a half hours and go home and get Dang. paid for it so yeah. uh if you want people to stick around have booze and if you don't don't have booze. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that going. It works either. for me. Yeah, you work in your favor. I go way. home and drink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, old timey word of the week, Lady Abyss. Mm. Lady Abyss, oh. which is the 
Mistress of a Brothel. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Lady Abyss. Yeah, I never heard that before. Apparently, it's like the head headmistress of a brothel. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so there's that. Um, not a Lady Abyss. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. Dan's looking a little extra longer than he normal does. Yeah, yeah. I kind of had to there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our Beer Babe of the Week, you can find her on the Instagrams at Beer Rookie. All one word, no spaces, no dashes. No nice. Anything. Beer Rookie. Uh, and this one, she's at the Keo Hot Springs in California. It looks like she's drinking something from Monkish, which is always a good oh, yeah. choice. So make sure you go find go find and follow Beer Rookie. Beer on, Rookie. Yeah, on the Instagrams there. Uh, all right. I'm very excited for this. I think it's time for some more Christmas drinking games. Oh, yes. All right. I've got two for you guys. Tell me which one you like better. The first one is called Holiday Sausages. Okay. <laughs> I never heard of this one before. Hmm. Uh, holiday sauce, sausages. I bet you can guess where this is headed. You'll need two teams. Seat everyone in parallel rows. It says need two teams. I think they need teams of two. You need teams of two. Everybody needs a partner up for this one. Seat everyone parallel and row across from each other. A person from team. Oh, I guess, well, if the whole row. They should explain this better, and I should read it more before I <laughs> do on the show. All right, so you need two rows of people, essentially. They're, they're all facing each other. Could be five on five, could be ten on ten, whatever. Uh, a person from one team makes up a question and poses it to the person sitting across from them. No matter what, the other person has to answer with holiday sausages, hence the name of the game. Anyone who laughs has to drink. <laughs> uh, so some, oh, some potential questions could be like, when Santa ran out of food at the North Pole, what did he turn his elves into? Holiday sausages. <laughs> when Rudolph poops, what do you call his droppings? Holiday sausages. Uh, when you went downstairs in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve, what was your dad holding? Holiday sausages. <laughs> Are you happy to see me or what's in your pocket? Holiday sausages. So you see where that's going. I see. That could be interesting at a party. The other one is called the Santa Hat Drinking Game. And I bet a lot of people have heard of this one. Uh, it's one where you put the Santa hat on the corner of your TV, and every time someone is framed up perfectly oh, yeah. to where it looks like they're wearing said Santa hat, you have to take a drink. I tried that one time. Oh, did you? Yeah, and I thought it would go over a lot better, but uh, it was really hard for somebody to wear that damn hat. I was oh. like, someone get in the fucking hat already. I want a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just ended up kind of drinking while watching a terrible movie. How funny. You know, I was thinking about it today when I was prepping the show and I was I was reading that part. Mm -hmm. I had the thought that I bet that was a lot easier to do before HD was a thing. Because yeah. now that we have high def, we have yeah. a wider screen. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they won't have people on the edge of the frame. Because for the like the eight people who are still watching standard def, they <laughs> won't see it. Yeah. So they're, more, they're a little more center frame. As we call in the biz, center cut. And uh, <laughs> thus, you don't get the Santa hat on the corner. It didn't happen a lot. Yeah. That's what I remember. Uh, so I bet that's a bigger problem these days. Mm -hmm. What's that in your holiday hat? Holiday sausage. There you yeah. go. Oh, take uh, a drink. Let's have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dan's got a movie to get oh, okay. to. We have a bullpen beer. We have a Christmas tradition and some booze news. I think we start things off with a movie. What okay. say you? Let's do it. <laughs> have you seen the latest moving picture? Let's talk movies for guys. All right. So the movie I watched over the weekend was The Possession of Hannah Grace. Oh. And uh, this movie is, uh, it's, uh, it's a new movie. And it came out uh, maybe about a couple weeks ago. Is it the uh, sequel to the How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Or? <laughs> no. It sounds so Christmas thing. <laughs> it's not a very <laughs> festive movie Oops. to be watching right now either. Oh. Yeah. Basically what happened, it's about a um, chick named Hannah Grace who, uh, dies during an exorcism like right in the beginning of the movie or does she no so, <laughs> that's basically the whole movie i gotta say it was terrible 
Awful movie. Uh, I, and I think there was a couple reasons why. I go. The first reason was it wasn't very scary. Mm. Um, basically, she, she dies, yes, but she becomes reanimated in the morgue. And she's just causing like chaos in that morgue with, you know, I guess a couple people or whatever. <laughs> Um, I, I, but in, during the exorcism, uh, scene in the beginning, it just wasn't scary. Like I felt like, uh, sure. A lot of her motions were real creepy and I thought she performed those really well. Like, um, some of the ways she was crawling around, like it was pretty offsetting, mm -hmm. but, uh, there wasn't that real, like kind of terror, uh, that you got from say like the movie, the exorcist where like, mm. you just did not want them to go back into that room with Reagan and you just, every time they did yeah. your butthole puckered up, you know what I mean? Like there wasn't. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there wasn't that feeling in this movie so i feel like the movie she didn't put a cross up her vagina no uh, oh yeah. yeah i know that's always something you look forward to <laughs> in, in this case it, it didn't and uh and that's a party right there yeah <laughs> and they uh party fell <laughs> <laughs> instead they kind of resort to jump scares which is my <laughs> least favorite kind of like uh that's how you know you're watching a crappy horror movie is when someone just pops up out of nowhere. Hey, how's it going? And right. Tries to scare you. And it's like, oh, God, this is happening and this is awful. It's like if I wanted this, I'd go to a haunted house. Yeah. 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 So it's it's really bad in that sense where it just kind of resorts to that. The other reason was uh, Shay Mitchell is uh, a, uh, an actress. And okay. She plays a protagonist in the movie. Um I remember her from a show called Pretty Little Liars, and it's not a show that I watched, but it was my ex-girlfriend would watch it, and I'd kind of just like, you know, walk in and go, what are you watching? Because it's like chicks like in high school, but they're dressed like really hot. And uh, I, It but, makes you feel like a creep? Yes. <laughs> I ended up calling it Pretty Little Jail Babes. <laughs> Because they were just so hot, but they were, and I had to look it up. I was like, I, I feel naughty. <laughs> Like, I feel terrible. I have to find out how old they are. I Thank am excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God this woman was born in 87. So I was like, okay. Oh, good. All right. Thank God. And the show was in 2011. So she was well into her right. 20s playing someone in high school. And yeah. and, and that's, that kind of works that way in Hollywood anyways. Sure. You know? So, But she's in the movie. Uh, I didn't like in the beginning of the movie because she's the brown one. So she was kind of my favorite one on that show. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's hey, she's, she's, yeah. she's the one I like. <laughs> I was like, don't be gross. She's in high school. Like, no, she isn't. But anyways, like uh, in the beginning of the movie, they were like, uh, they, they like she leaves the house and she like looks at a picture of, I guess it's her parents and it's a white mom and a black, uh, you know, father. And I go, and you don't ever see them again. So I kind of felt like, okay, thanks movie. That was really <laughs> racking my brain. What race she was. I couldn't go further on without finding out that she was a mixed race, you know, protagonist. Thank you movie. I really appreciate that. My brain was racking. Yeah, it was so <laughs> stupid. Um, and, uh, and, and there's not enough of her in like scantily clad clothing. Like uh, that's something I, I was, been, is there ever, I've been building up to see her already sure. that way in a nice, you know, legal fashion, <laughs> you know, as a, and she's the, she works in the morgue and she's the one that kind of discovers that, you know, Hannah Grace reanimates. You were excited for sans clothes. I was. <laughs> <laughs> sans clothes. That's right. Yeah. And it didn't happen. No. And, uh, I was very disappointed. The other reason why this movie doesn't work is because there's this character named Dave, and Dave is this special kind of asset that turns like a <laughs> <laughs> turns your regular old car crash into a fifty car pileup. Oh, wow. and he's basically the only reason that I didn't turn this movie off. Like I was like, <laughs> otherwise he was because he was just so distractingly creepy in the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, the first time you see him, he starts talking to Shane Mitchell's character, like, "Hey, how's it going?" Blah blah blah. And in the most off-putting matter it's like dude get away from her you're weird like, <laughs> and you look like blake griffin you need to knock it off <laughs> so in the but then the next scene like she's like in the morgue and she has drawers open or something and he just pops up out of nowhere behind a drawer it says hey how's it going i'm like did you crawl into the room <laughs> what the how, hell how the fuck did you do that so and, and you know unfortunately for me like dave was killed off rather early in the movie uh, but his creepiness just kind of kept coming up like, it lingered <laughs> yeah it did like anything that happened that hannah grace was doing everyone thought it was dave I was like dave is that you like shane mitchell is like taking a leak in the restroom <laughs> and she hears a noise in the women's restroom and she goes dave is that you <laughs> it's like even in the women's Dave's restroom that creepy yeah. that they just you assume are, it's him you're not safe from dave like he will find you and he will creep out your fucking world so uh that it's a, it's a terrible movie i feel like the 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 budget you know the special effects are about on par with what you expect sure uh, but like the scares are very predictable 
Dave is off-puttingly creepy and just not enough of Shay Mitchell. So, uh, you know, you're drinking to get through it. <sighs> do not recommend this movie. Wow. At all. Terrible. Mm. Could you at least like turn into a fun drinking game or something? Like, yeah. every, every time they bring up Dave, every take time a shot. they bring up Dave, there for sure. I love take that guy. All right. He was, he was distractingly creepy. So, once again, the recommendation back to Wolf Cop. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Or, you know, the, yes. you know, watch another real actual scary, scary movie for free, like on Netflix for like, like Baba Duke or something. There that was go. like a really creepy movie. So, or you could always, uh, you could always watch Krampus. Beer it is. Yeah. Santa yeah. Slay. There you go. Yeah. Santa Slay. Yet another great option. Oh, yes. With the Goldberg. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Yeah. Santa's next. <laughs> uh, speaking of next, I think next we ought to, uh, call to the pen. I think it's important. Yes. He calls to the bullpen for beer. I think it's safe to say that Dan's been looking forward to this moment Mm -hmm. for about a year now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) yeah. I'll stop talking to him so he can pour the beer. Sorry, were you going to say something, Scott? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. I'll tell you about the beer while they pour it over there. We are drinking. We call this a bullpen beer, but this is really the closer. We're drinking... (laughs) Stone's Choco Vesa oh, Mocha man. Stout. 8.1%. You know what? We need some more fucking music for Christmas. There you go. 8.1%. 50 IBUs. 4.34 on Beer Advocate. A 4.15 on Untapped. From the brewery, this is a beloved stout. When first introduced as a limited special collaboration release with San Diego home brewer Chris Banker, and Cerveceria Insurgente. It was an instant hit, and fans began clamoring for its return. Seeing as how its amazing flavor profile is evocative of Mexican hot chocolate featuring coffee, pasilla peppers, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a generous amount of our own in-house made chocolate, we concluded it was the perfect stout to re-release in celebration of the holidays and the entire winter season. This is now a highly anticipated yearly tradition that we are pleased to present from us to you and makes a perfect wintry gift from you to your friends, loved ones, or simply to yourself. Cheers. Good now reading, av- Chuck. Now available at your local hipster bar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. on tap? Oh, yeah. man. They're very seasonal with their choosings there. Nice. That's very hipster of them yeah. to be seasonal. <laughs> That's awesome. So how many of you had these? Oh, these oh man. I, mean, <laughs> I, I go at least once a week, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I know, I know this is your jam. Oh yeah! Like people say, like, oh, it's your jam. No, this is your jam. Yeah, my jam. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I must say, it's become a little bit of a tradition here. It's not Christmas until the gentlemen have a choco vesa. I love Correct. that tradition. Yeah, it's yeah. a great tradition. I love it, and I love the fact that I can put these in my fridge, and my lady friend won't drink them. She cannot stand these. <gasps> Get out of here! She wow. doesn't like. She does not like spicy beer, and I don't mean spicy like hot and spicy. The spices, like the cinnamon and the nutmeg, oh, wow. she does not like that in a beer. She doesn't like the Mexican hot chocolate flavoring of beer. Oh, I see. Mm. No wonder you're marrying her. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She won't drink my IPAs and she won't drink my Choco Vesa. Yeah. No wonder that's all you buy. It's a match yeah. made in heaven over yeah, here. Yeah, it's great. I, I always know when I come home from a long day at work exactly what will be in my fridge. <laughs> so for those that haven't listened to us talk about oh this, my God. Oh. on the nose, it's a lot Man. of chocolate and spices. Oh, my God. And it is Ooh. followed up by a very similar flavor. Oh, my God. Delicious. It is so good. Excuse me while I drink. Yeah. Very, very toasty. It's it's just a treat every time, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a treat. It's it, what I live for. It tastes like Christmas in my mouth. Yes. Yes. I can co-sign that. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put the it. The season can now begin. It's true. There's there's a few things for me that, that make it Christmas time. One is Choco Vesa, and the other is, well, there's three. Another one is, is being at Disneyland during Christmas when they have all the lights up and stuff. That's very like, ah, oh, now we're... Now we're Christmas. We all know I'm a Disneyland nerd. This shouldn't become a surprise to anybody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, love the, the lights at Disneyland for Christmas. Love having the Choco Vesa. And I guess this will be a perfect segue into my third thing. Uh, I don't remember if we've done this on this show or not. But uh, growing up in L.A., L.A. area, my favorite radio show as a child, and, and still now, no one has topped it, I don't think. And I'll sometimes go back and listen to old segments and stuff I find online, but Mark and Brian. Mm. Mark and Brian was a classic L.A. staple for morning radio. They were hilarious, and every Christmas, it was not Christmas until they had the dropping of the Yule Log. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Scott knows where this is going. Yeah. And they found this on an old cassette tape, I believe at like a Salvation Army, <laughs> that they just bought and they were listening to and they thought, holy shit, we have to put this on the air. And this is a Disney tape, like Disney produced this. And, uh, well, I'll just play it and you guys can see why I love it so much. Christmas Eve is probably the most exciting night of the year for children everywhere. At our house, the ritual is always the same. Mom hurries dinner out of the way so that the festivities can begin. First, I lay a fire in the fireplace. I pride myself on the way I lay a fire. To begin, I crinkle newspaper to put under the grate. Then I put in the kindling, breaking the sticks into the proper lengths. Then I bring in the Yule log and put it in the grate. That's the biggest log we've ever had, Dad. Yeah, and the heaviest, too. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. Dude just takes a dump on tape. <laughs> that is so good. I grew up with that thanks to Mark and Brian. So to me, it's not Christmas until someone has dropped the Yule Log. So uh, had to play it. I, I hope I played in the past. I really can't remember. If not, it'll be it'll have to become a yearly tradition here Definitely. on the show. So um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's Let's do a little news before we wrap things up over here. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Yes, indeed. You know, we talked about in the last show about the uh, the bubble, the craft beer bubble starting to pop. Another example is Deschutes was supposed to start cr- uh, construction on their Virginia project in 2019, and now they're delaying it, and they don't think they'll even be breaking ground in 2019, if Ooh. at all. Wow. So uh, they say slowing sales and distribution is leading to this decision, so we'll see. What happens with them? Uh, Founders is going to start contract brewing their all-day IPA. I think we've all probably had all-day IPA. It's pretty readily available out here. All day. Uh, They're going to start contract brewing at Avery over in Colorado. Um, It's kind of interesting. They're they're both 20... What is it? 5% owned by the same uh, company. So I guess they are, you know, sort of partners. So they said, hey, we we need you to brew our shit, and, and they're brewing it. Maybe that means for us out here, we'll get fresher all day, all, all day IPA because it's coming from Colorado instead of Michigan. Uh, the Brews Association, the independent seal, that upside down bottle that you see at uh, craft breweries and such, reaches a new milestone. It's now in 4,000 U.S. breweries. Wow. That's a lot of breweries. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of breweries in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> NorCal, a Tesla driver, was pulled over by cops. After sleeping oh, at the shit. wheel while the car was in autopilot. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, which is the whole reason I want one of these self-driving cars. Because then I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I can either, on my way to work where I'm in a long commute, I could just do work on my laptop while it drives me. Or at night, I can get hammered and it drives me home. I don't see anything wrong with this. Right. Uh, I guess the cops tried for seven miles to pull him over. <laughs> he was passed the fuck out. And they eventually had to get in front of his car and slow down so the car oh, would slow man. down. Oh, it's on autopilot. So they messed can, the shit up. Yeah, so they had to get the car to slow itself down. And when they tried to wake him up, like he wouldn't <laughs> wake up. And they finally got him out of the car and gave him a uh, field sobriety test. He wasn't and, driving. That's what I keep saying. Like, would you rather this guy been driving? Yeah, I know. And it, they, they keep saying, like, oh, but you have to be able to take control of the car at any time. It's like, these cars are so much smarter than us. Why do you want us to take control of it? Like, let us drunk people... Get rides home for free. Like right. We, we spent yeah. the money on the car. I'll pick you up. Yeah, or that, too. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, Good luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it might be worse. I know, right? Just, we want Just drive yourself. <laughs> jump, yeah. jump in a fucking Uber. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's safer. Yeah. Come on. Have <laughs> anybody. Yeah. Oh, my I God. I gotcha. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see the big problem here. People need to get over themselves. How okay. does that work? Like, if there's a car in front of you, does it just learn to slow down? Or Yeah, you know the cars that have that, like, auto braking feature, yeah. but they don't have, like, the actual autopilot feature? It's the same kind of thing where, like, it's always tracking it. So, if a car in front slows down, they slow down. So, that's what the cops did. They just got in front of it and 
gradually slowed down and the Is car had to slow. Why would yeah. they need to though? Oh, okay. So I, they wanted to pull him over because he was passed out. I thought they passed like out not driving. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's how they so, slowed him. Yeah. I thought maybe they pit maneuvered his ass or something. Mm-mm, like, mm-mm. oh, okay. No, they just used the car to their own that's, advantage and slowed it down. Probably wow. so much safer than him driving. Oh, clearly. But yeah. yet they still. Uh, so why'd they pull weird. him over? Because he was speeding or what? You're, it's illegal to not have your hands on the wheel, even for oh, self-driving man. cars. Did they see that? He was Karen. passed out. He was passed the fuck out. You know, the funny thing is he probably had his hands on the wheel because those cars will not go without pressure on the steering wheel. Okay. In, oh, okay. In fact, my friend, I will not name names, <laughs> uh, his boss has one of these cars and he said the boss, A, let him drive it. And it's got the ludicrous mode on. You guys know what ludicrous mode is? Ludicrous speed. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. Luda. Uh, essentially, electric engines or motors are nothing but torque. Like, it's just it's just all torque. So they actually have to program them, like, with computers and stuff, to drive like normal cars. So when you step on the gas, it, like, gradually speeds up and doesn't just, like, well, bam, and shoot out. So what ludicrous mode does, and it's only on the sport or whatever, like the super fancy editions of the Teslas, and it's actually called ludicrous mode, is it basically turns off all that programming. So when you step on the gas pedal, it just fucking shoots off like a rocket. Oh, shit. Yeah, it uses all that torque, and you just, it's insane. He got to drive it, and she's like, please put my car in ludicrous mode. He's like, are you sure? Because this is a dream come true. Him and I have always talked about how we want Teslas with ludicrous mode. (laughs) And uh, he got to drive it, and he fucking punched it, and he said it was so hard to control. Like He was so pushed into the back of the seat. Yeah, I bet. He eventually just had to take his foot off the gas so that he could like sit back up and start driving again. It's like, God damn, I'm jealous. But the moral of that story was uh, it also has a self-driving thing. And he says the boss likes to get stuff done while she's driving to work. She has a very long commute. So she'll get like those two pound hand weights that you put on while you're jogging with the Velcro on them. Oh yeah. And she Velcros them to the steering wheel because they need that pressure of being held. And she Velcros them to the steering wheel and then does her work while the car drives her to work. Oh, that's crazy though. (laughs) Isn't that good? I don't know how, oh my God, how quick I would be to, you know, allow the car to drive itself. Oh, yeah, sure. It might be weird the first few times. Yeah. I'm all for it. Like, I can't wait. Like, oh, yeah. Don't you know they're wrong. smarter than we are. They have to be. Yeah, they're they're way smarter than we are. They but, see everything. We oh see nothing. Oh, my God. Like, I would be just so kind of scared to try it. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, it'd be a little freaky the first couple of times, like, as you come up yeah. to a car, and it's like, is it going to stop? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then watch, like, I'm the one that actually gets in an accident. It was like, well, what were you doing, you buzz? I was like, well, the car was driving itself. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> you have an 87 Tercel. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean driving itself? Oh, man. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm all for the self-driving cars, and I guess it might put Scott out of a job, though. Yeah, that's true. That yeah. would. Yeah. Tells from not driving Uber. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God. That's depressing. Yeah. Uh, What else? Oh, up in San Francisco, they're having Beer Week on February 1st. So uh, get your tickets ready. They're going to be doing a big gala the first night with uh, tons of breweries. In fact, over uh, 120 are participated to attend. There will be at least uh, 300 rare beers on tap. So uh, February 1st is the start of San Francisco Beer Week. I suggest we all tell our works to go fuck themselves and... Take a little trip up to San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. Here, here. Uh, and finally, we'll end it with this. And we'll end it with more uh, Christmas music because we can. <laughs> Ten beers to, su- to survive the holidays. If only English was survivable. Uh, this is brought to you by thefullpint.com. Ten beers you need to survive the holidays. You guys let me know if you've had any of these ones. Okay. Uh, Epic's Quadruple Barrel Big Bad Baptist. Anybody have that one? I don't think so. Oh, it's delicious and it's boozy as fuck. <laughs> uh, number nine, Deschutes Jubilee. No. I just saw this today for the first time. I've heard of it. I've never seen it before and they had it at Total Wine. I almost bought it, but I'd already spent a lot of money on beer. <laughs> uh, Surly's Coffee Bender. Mm-mm. I've never heard of that one. Firestone, I don't know why this made the holiday list. Firestone Walkers, Pivo Pills. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I think we probably all had Pivo Pills, but uh, they say when, there's going to be a moment when you absolutely can't stomach another barrel-aged malt bomb of a stout or the spicy notes of your favorite Christmas ale. When that time comes, and and it will, reach into your stash of Firestone Walkers, Pivo Pills to reset your palate and give your taste buds a hard-earned rest from the barrel-aged 
or from the barrage of dark, roasty seasonal beers that will inevitably be served at every single holiday event you go to. That's true. It's true, but uh, never get tired of this choco face. That's so. right. Mm. Uh, Dogfish Heads... Excuse me. Oh, I'm burping like crazy. Dogfish <laughs> Heads Sea Quench Ale. Uh-oh. No, okay. Blackberry Farms Wild Classic Saison. Mm-mm. We had this one a couple weeks ago. Sierra Nevada's Celebration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so good. Yes, it is. Fathead's Holly Jolly Christmas Ale. I have not had that one. I've had other Fathead beers, but not that one. Southern Tears Salted Caramel Stout. I have had that one. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is. <laughs> it's a little sweet. It's good, but it's sweet. Sounds like it. Yeah. And then number one, Oscar Blues Barrel Age 1050. Mm-mm. I am not the hugest fan of 1050. I don't think I've had the barrel aged one. I've had the regular one. And like while it's good, I think it's a little overrated. It was just fine. right. Yeah. And I like Oscar Blues. And to kind of break up all that stout, you know, stuff, like I mean, what, what happened to New Belgium's uh accumulation? Oh yeah. Right? Isn't I that... saw that in a mix pack today at the store. Oh wow. Oh. Almost got it. Yeah, so wh- good. White a- white IPA, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that, a good one. That's delicious. Yeah. I do love that one. Maybe yeah. maybe we find that. Before the uh, winter season is over. Mm-hmm. All right, that's all I got. Anybody got anything else before we wrap things up and drink our way into Christmas? Yeah, you know uh, oh. about that t- self-driving Tesla? Yeah. I wonder how RoboCop would have handled that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's not a person. It's another robot at that point, you know? So would he charge the guy or would he let the robot go? Or That's true. Maybe he fall in love. Yeah, that's oh. true. It's like, get out of the way of that car, creep. <laughs> <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Oh, geez. Yeah. Starts doing, <laughs> I don't know. Starts fiddle faddling with it. Yeah. yeah. I think December must, in some language, mean uh, get drunk a lot. Isn't that like every month for you? Well, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> December is even more because- you're Like, any day that ends with Y means get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to December, you have all those holidays, and then, like for me, I save all my you know days off or yeah. whatever, and then yeah. you have to use them at the end of the year. That's where I'm at. I'm, I'm taking off so many days right now. So I'll co-sign it's like, that. Okay, I got a lot of days off, and I'll co-sign that because you're right. Like, yeah, you, you got Christmas. You I got, got the holidays. Holiday, I'm drinking. You got, I got my days off. Parties. I'm drinking. Yeah, and just a lot of drinking. No kidding. So somewhere in the world, December means drunk a lot. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. I, I like that. Google, Google that. <laughs> yeah, don't tweet us, please. <laughs> Google it, bitches. <laughs> Where's Paul Heyman's drop with that? <laughs> that was about... <laughs> that was so good. Oh, what was that like three, four weeks ago? Yeah, it point? was. Oh, oh, that was a great Paul Heyman promo. They're it all was, great Paul Heyman That promos. was classic. Let's, let's be honest here. Uh, all right, we're going to wrap things up. I'm going to end things with a song that my lady friend sang for us a few years back. Oh, man. <laughs> I almost did uh, Midlife, the, the Uber driver, whatever, but uh, <laughs> stayed away from that one. This one is just a very generic song about being drunk that oh, I good. think fits into the season of drinking. Especially now that we've discovered that December means get it drunk. It does means a drunk month. Exactly. So I'll leave you all with that. In the meantime, find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com, at the Unfiltered Gentleman on uh, all the social medias. You can call us and leave drunk voicemails at 805 538 Beer. It's 2337. And uh, let us know your favorite Christmas and holiday drinking games. I think that's everything. So uh, hope you're all staying drunk for December and staying hydrated. And on that note, Good night, everybody.